Well, hi friends, Debbie here with Debbie Gets Crafty. And I thought maybe we would work on our daily whip and chat and we'll see how far we can get on our little Yorkie with roses on her eyes and her nose today. We'll try, let's see if we can't get that done. And we'll, we'll see how far it takes us, about a half hour or so. So let's get started. So we'll start on her, let's see, the letter Y. We'll start with the letter Y. And the letter Y is number 938, which is a dark brown. There's not very much left in the bottle, which would indicate to me we don't have very much left to do with the letter Y. So we'll go ahead and get started. And friends, how are you today? I hope you're doing well. I am doing great. I want to wish you a great day, a great evening, a great afternoon, whatever time it may be where you are I wish you the very best and me I am great cranky as always you ought to know me by now friends cranky as all get out and how's the weather where you are today I hope it's cooperating for you it's getting very hot here we're headed into our last part of summer I hope in the Labor Day weekend here in the States. That's when we celebrate Labor Day. I need to fill my pen. I forgot to do that. And so we'll go ahead and grab a little bit of the wax. And friends, this Yorkie and Roses picture was gifted to me by the incredible Diamond Painting with Sweet Tea. And this is my very first square from Diamond Art Club and she's really coming together nicely. Let's see here. So I have all my Y's done in her little nose. Let's check out the rest of this area. Got a couple up here that we need to address. There we go. Oh, we got a got one that wants to sit a little wonky. There we go. And let's see, any more? I'm going to recheck right around here. Sometimes my little eyes deceive me. And let's see, yep, we got a couple right here. So we'll take care of those. And continuing onward, do we have any Y's? Y, Y, yes, we do. Right there. And let's see, any more Y's? Why, 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 why? None that I can see. Let's go ahead, continue looking around, scoping that out. Nope, we're good. All right, so we'll take our stopper out of our boat and pour the rest. We didn't have very many left, but uh, we had enough. So. We'll put that away. That is retired. Thank you for your service, Mr. Y. The next color we'll do, I think, will be the letter V. V like victory. And the letter V is going to be number 7, which is 413. And a nice gray color. You'll see that this is all grays in here now. So we'll go ahead and I already see up top a couple of let me go ahead and zoom you in. There we go. Okay. So I already see up at the top a couple of them up near her, her flowers. So we're going to address them first. Why not, right? If we have the color out, might as well do it. There's only a few in there that need to be done up in that area. So we'll address those because this way we can go ahead and retire this color too. Pardon me, friends, for the crinkling. There we go. And let's see here. I'm just moving along. Singing a song side by side. And I got a little bit of the... There we go. All right. Continuing onward. There we go.
and that's coming along quite nicely. Gee, Doug, could you mess that one up anymore? There we go. Let me bring this down a little bit. There we go. How's that? Much better, right? I get the picture after a while, I promise. I can be a bit of a dim bulb, but I do brighten up every so often. There we go. There. We're almost done with this little section right here, and then we'll move down back to her nose area. Like I said, I just wanted to get this this little portion up here done because this is the last that I'll have to use this color. So might as well retire it now. That's what I call when I use the, the color all the way. When it's all filled in on the picture, I retire it because I won't need to use it anymore. So, there. Okay. Now we'll head back down here to her nose and her eyes. All right. So, what's everybody working on today? Anything new? Any new projects? Are you just about finished with a, a project, a current project? Are you kidding up a new project? Are you kidding down an old project? What are you doing? Inquiring minds want to know, and by inquiring minds, I mean me, because I'm nosy. I always like to ask questions. So that is the last of the V's in her nose. Let me just make a quick check here. Yep. So we're going to move on to the outer areas where I see a V. That's where we will put one of these little gems. They're gems, they're drills, they're diamonds, they're beads, they're anything you want to call them. She's really starting to come together really quickly now. And I figured, you know what? If you had the time, might as well try to see if we can't accomplish the whole area. I don't see why not, right? It might take us a little longer than a half an hour. And you know I like to try to stay within a half an hour, but let's try to set this goal. See how it goes, how close we are by a half an hour. And we'll see if it's a goal that we can achieve today. We're going to do our very best, our level best, to try to make it happen. And let's see here, just scoping out, seeing where there's a V. And how is the weather where you all are? Like I said, it's really warm here in Middle Tennessee. Our summer, Mother Nature is saying, no, no. You're not done yet. Just because it's September doesn't mean that it's automatically autumn. At least not for a little while. So she's given us some some more hot temperatures. Just to remind us who's boss. That we can't change the weather. But as long as we get to, to get up and wake up every morning and experience the weather, no matter what she has in store, well, then that's a win. That is a win, my friend. Let's see here. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Almost. There we go. See, after a little coaxing, it'll straighten itself out a little bit. There we go. And I always say, once we get more drills in that area, even if they're a little cockeyed right now. They'll straighten out because the drills, once they're placed, will help to straighten them out. So, just push this over a little tiny bit. I tell you, uh, woke up this morning to the turkeys in our driveway, walking down the street and up our driveway and yard. Woke up to a, a bunch of crows. 
it sounds like autumn. If I was still up in New York and the weather was getting cooler with the crows and everything and the leaves, you know, are going to start to change soon, you would swear it was autumn. I love autumn in New York State. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Especially where I'm originally from in New York State. People say, you know, where are you from? And I tell them New York and they think, oh, the city. I've never been to the city. I don't want to go to the city. I'm like, yeah, I don't want either. But I'm not from the city. I'm from upstate New York. Originally. And uh, from where I'm from, autumn is gorgeous. So... But here in Tennessee, in Middle Tennessee, it's beautiful here in the autumn and late uh, late summer, autumn. Absolutely gorgeous. When I lived in Florida, I didn't know how much I missed the autumn colors until I moved here to Tennessee. And when you get those rich, vibrant oranges, reds, yellows, gold colors... It just, it, it ceases to amaze me how gorgeous it is this time of year when autumn starts to change the leaves. And I always tell my husband about when we, when my twin sister and I lived in New York growing up, every year my parents used to take us on a family picnic in the autumn to West Point where the uh, Army cadets go to school and it's uh, open to the public at least it was back then and we used to take a picnic lunch we used to go up there literally for the entire day they have one of the most beautiful military museums around and you get to you could drive around the entire area of West Point it's gorgeous it sits in the mountains and going over this mountain to get to West Point, you would look out and see all the beautiful mountains. And it looked like, I I grew up in the 70s, and shag carpets were big then. And the golds and the, you know, those types of colors were, were big back then. And you would look out and see these beautiful, vibrant reds, golds, tans, oranges, yellow. And it looked, I always thought to myself, it's God's shag carpeting. <laughs> That's what it reminded me of, God's shag carpeting. So, but it was so stunningly amazing. But we used to go and literally take the entire day. We would go and, wow, we're done with the V's. We would go and visit the museum there. And we get, used to go every year. And every year we would go to the same museum and you would still find things that were new and fascinating to learn and we would take our picnic lunch we would sit out uh, in one of the picnic areas they had several picnic areas available to the public and you had your chance to walk around they had different trails that had these learning experiences where they had these little um, uh, like animated uh, people the animatronic people that would tell a story about the area surrounding the West Point Academy. And uh, like back in uh, like the Revolutionary War, they, you know, told stories about that and told stories. Just it, it told several different stories and it was fascinating. Spend the whole day there. They have Mikey Stadium, which is the big football stadium there for the uh, Army cadets. And we used to go, and back then you they would have the the stadium, you know, available. You could walk out on the field. We used to walk out on the field and run up and down the field. It was just so much fun. Whole day dedicated to it. And um, now I'm going to do the letter L next, which is number six three seventeen. And it was just so much fun. Every year my parents took us, and we it was just such a treat. It was great family time great memories and just to, it reminds me you know every year when I when I look out 
and see the beautiful autumn colors. Like I said, when I lived in Florida, I really didn't realize how much I missed the autumn colors until I moved back up to uh, Tennessee to the, you know, to an area that had actual four seasons or as close to four seasons as you can get because we're still down here in the south, so. But it really, I, I, my first autumn back, you know, in a place where it actually has four-ish seasons, it still gets pretty warm here. Even in the wintertime, we don't get too much of a bad winter. But um, we get the autumn, and yeah, I just absolutely loved it. I said, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm home again. So... And my husband and I, we love to take rides out to different parts of the uh, area where we live. And you're always finding some, you know, something new and, and interesting to look at or, or do. And especially in the autumn time, it's just so beautiful. And the weather is cooler, so we like to get out more during the autumn months. So that's, uh, gosh, my parents and I and my twin sister, we used to have so many adventures. Judy and I often say, you know, we would never trade our childhood for anything. We were very lucky and uh, we have some really great memories and great times. Camping, we used to do a lot of camping during the summertime. We even camped in the uh, autumn months as well. Matter of fact, Judy and I, our birthday, she's my twin sister, Judy is, and our birthday is in October. We used to go camping in October and have our birthday party up at our camp. And that was a lot of fun. And it would get cold. Our birthday was in late October and uh, it would get pretty chilly. As a matter of fact, one year we camped and it was around Halloween. And that was a lot of fun. We actually went to all the different campsites and went trick-or-treating. It was a lot of fun. Wore our little costumes and walked around the campground. It was so much fun. But we used to go camping all the time. My goodness gracious. Loved it. That's where I got my love of camping. From my parents. We're hoping next year, when Spoto is a little older and a little bit more trained, we'll be able to do some camping with him. I think he'll enjoy it, being outside. So we're hoping, 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 hoping. My mobility is not the greatest these days, so that will be a factor as well. I'm trying. But, uh, yeah, that's a challenge. But, we're, we'll see. Hopefully we'll be able to get out there and get some camping in. We tank camp, so it can be a bit of a challenge if you have some mobility issues setting up the tent and stuff. Luckily, the tent that we have it's a really neat and easy tent to set up, but it still takes a little bit of physical, you know, energy to, to get the tent set up. And then, you know, you have to set up the bedding and everything. And so there's still, you know, some logistics that have to be done that have to be met physically. And, uh, you know, this year just wasn't, it wasn't meant to be for me to, to camp. Plus with Spoto. But we're hoping, like I said, hopefully next year. Here we go, friends. We're done with another color. Oh, we have a little bit up here. I'm going to finish up up there. And then we can retire this color, too. There we go. And so we'll go ahead and finish that color up here. That'll be another color in the books. There we go. A 
Oh, that square came out like a diamond. There we go. Got to square it up again. Not perfect, but there we go. Now it's good. Four more. Three, two. Good grief, Debbie. There we are. So yeah, there's that. Hopefully next year I'll have my mobility under control and a little bit better. Be a little bit more physically able to handle setting up and breaking down tents and camp. And my husband, God bless him, last year when we went camping, he did a bulk of it by himself. I would he would I would help him set up the tent the best I could. Uh, because that's when my mobility started to, to fail me a bit. And, uh, but then he'd set up the screen house. He would set up the, you know, the outside portion. And I would take care of the, um, wow, I think we're done with the L's. I would take care of the bedding on the inside and set up the, you know, the air beds and stuff. And get all that taken care of. But he did a, a lion's share of the work. And, uh. God bless him. Never complained or anything. Uh, let's see here. And he just messaged me, so bear with me for one second. There we go. And so in the next color we'll do is the letter H. And I see I missed a couple of V's. See, this is this is me right here. Debbie, hello. And that's number seven, so we'll grab the seven. I'm not even going to pour them in the in the container. I'm just going to pour them right in the cap of my drill container. And I know exactly where they are. One is right down here. There we go. And the other one is right there. Okay. Make sure that that's facing upward. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now I'll work on the letter H. And the letter H is the very last color, which is seven, uh, 3799, which is a dark, really dark gray. And so we'll put that in the tray. Shake that tray. And actually, we'll start inside her nose. Get her little nose done first. And I don't even know what time we started, friends, so... Let's see here. There we go. There. Perfect. All right. That's done in the nose, so we'll go ahead and move over. And start here. Yeah, my parents uh, started my love affair of camping and being doing things like that. Matter of fact, we, Judy and I, began a camping when we were just babies. Our parents used to go to this one campground, and they knew the owners, and they would have a seasonal site, which means that would be the same site that they would camp at all, all summer long. And my dad and his friends, his buddies, built this platform on the site. And my mom and dad had a, an old army tent that they set up. And they had a, a dresser that they had. 
an old dresser that they put in this army tent and they had you know a nice big it was a huge tent so it fit it fit us all fine and uh, we were just tiny little things and that's how we started camping and we would go up every weekend and it was just a lot of fun lots of great memories we used to camp with uh, this one family that were our lifelong friends and just so much fun. Nothing like sitting out on a nice cool evening in front of the fire, listening to music or telling stories or playing games. The kids would be running around in the dark playing army or, you know, uh, hide-and-go-seek or, you know, some, some kind of games and just a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I know camping's not for everybody. I know some people would be like, my form of camping is in an RV or my form of camping is in a hotel. There were times where we would... Uh, there was a summer where we rented at this one campground that we used to go to for several years. We rented... They had um, campers that you could rent. So we rented one of their campers whenever we went up there and that was fun um, but we enjoyed our tent camping mostly our dad's health started to fail so that's why we stopped going camping and uh, he had emphysema and COPD so he wasn't physically able to, you know, set up tents and stuff like that. So we, uh, eventually we phased it out, you know. But whenever we camp, I always, I always think of the good times that we used to have when we were growing up camping. Lots of fun. Good memories. There were square dances, hay rides, just so much fun. Fishing, we would ride, bring our bikes and ride our bikes. We would get up in the morning, Judy and I, get dressed, have breakfast, and hop on our bikes. We would go to the, they had a playground. I mean, I mean, we were gone literally all day. We would go home, we would go back to camp, go home, we would go back to camp and have lunch and then go back out. There was swimming, I mean, all kinds of stuff. And my parents wouldn't know, you know, they, we were everywhere. And of course we had, you know, you can't go past a certain point. You can't go, you know, out to the main road. Which is fine. We had no business out that way anyway. So, but I mean, we used to just be away from the the camp literally all day long, just going and having fun at the playground, meeting friends, and just having a good time. And then we'd go home, you know, to back to the campsite and have dinner and. play a little more until dark and then you know we'd have to be back at the campsite at dark and that's when dad had a fire lit the campfire and that's you know we'd have s'mores and enjoy sitting around by the fire until it was time to go to bed it's so much fun okay friends we only have a few more colors to go so I think we're gonna power through the next color is the is the symbol S. 
That's 414, number eight. So we'll go ahead, and I see here that I have a few up here that I want to tackle first. Oh, and I forgot a few H's right there. You know what? We're going to do that right now. While it's fresh in my head, fresh on my mind, let's go ahead and tackle the H's. Like I said, I'm not even going to put them in a boat. I'm just going to pour them right in the cap of my container. And you go right there. There we go. And okay. And I think my favorite time of year to camp is in the autumn. It's not so hot. You know, during the summertime camping, oh my gosh, especially in a tent. Friends, it was like you were parboiling. So hot, so uncomfortable. In the autumn, though, you'd get the cooler evenings, and it was cooler during the day. So, you dress warm, and I, I slept so good camping in the autumn. And let's see here. Okay, so we're at the letter S. We have some S up here. Some of the S's right up here. We'll start there. Helps if I don't put my hand in the glue. But I don't want to put a cover sheet on because she's so darn cute. There we go. Let's see, any more S's around here? No, I don't think so. So we'll start down here now. And I do have an S off here to the side, which I just filled in. And one right here. Then we have a handful right above her nose, that cute little nose of hers. There we go. Oop, had one fall off. Man overboard. That's all right. We're going to go ahead and put her replacement in right there. There. And then we'll continue onward and work over here. Here's an S there, and an S there, and you get an S, and you get an S. There we go. Let me shake this up, get some of these drills sitting up right here. They're easier to pick up that way. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. Now we are cooking with gas. She's coming along nice, friends. There we go. I just, you know, yesterday when we were finishing up her cheek area and around her nose, I was so inspired I wanted to to work on getting her around her eyes and getting her eyes done because she's just really coming together so nicely. And I said, well, I'm going to make it a mission on today's video to do just that, get that part done so we can see this beautiful little lady come to life. So we have some S's over here and we'll fill those in and I think that's going to retire this color. How exciting. We're retiring colors left, right, and center. Here we go. Beautiful. And let's see if there's anybody on the outer edge new. No. Okay. And so we'll go ahead and pour that back in. Then I think we're going to tackle the number one. We have some number one, which is 102, which I believe is 
Actually, we'll save that then. We're going to do, let's do the downward arrow. The downward arrow is number 31, which is 3371. I'm sorry, 3371. The downward arrow. So we have our drills in our boat, we have our little stopper in our boat, and let's get started. So we have some, where were you? I saw some up around here. We'll take care of those up there first, just so I don't forget. You know me, friends, I will forget, but trust me, by the time we're done with this painting, if there was any that I forgot, in any of my previous videos, I will get to them. Every drill that needs to be placed, trust me, will be placed. Now, we have some up here. I like to do a little once over once I'm uh, once I'm done. Well, I do a little once over as it gets closer to the end. Scanning the pictures, seeing if there's anything that I've missed, because inevitably there is, like one down by the bottom somewhere. Ah, I forgot to put that drill there, so I'll grab and fill that drill area in. All right, so that's all done. The downward arrow up in there, so we'll start over here. Actually, we'll start in the nose like I've been doing. Why, why mess with success, right? So we'll continue onward. Ooh, these are dark drills, dark brown, like a dark chocolate brown, you know? And you want to misbehave, but we're going to get you to fall into place. It takes a little getting used to, a little manipulation of it, but it'll go. So yeah, growing up, Judy and I, we, we used to do a lot. My parents used to take us roller skating. We used to go every Sunday roller skating during the winter months. And uh, it was just like a, I think it was a two hour, maybe, I don't know, maybe longer. Maybe four. I don't know why I think four. I don't remember. Maybe two. Back when I was little, two hours probably felt like four. And um, they had free skates. You had, you know, skate with your partner. They had all different kinds of, uh, you know, skatings during the family session. It was just a lot of fun. We used to love to go roller skating. We'd go roller skating on a Sunday morning at noontime noon until, I don't know, two or, yeah, something like two hours, so I guess until two o'clock. So we would do that during the winter time, and then downstairs in our basement in the house that we lived in, our basement was big enough that Judy and I could actually roller skate. We had a, a concrete basement floor, and we could roller skate around the basement. Believe it or not, I mean it was an it was an old house and uh, it was a pretty big cellar, pretty big uh, basement. So, like on days when it was snowing or you know something like that, we'd go downstairs and we'd bring our radio downstairs, and we would literally be downstairs all day long skating. We spent a lot of time in our basement, and it was just it wasn't really a finished basement, but. Um, but, you know, because that's why we were able to skate, roller skate around, because it wasn't finished. And uh, Judy and I would spend hours down there roller skating. So much fun. It'd be snowing like crazy outside, and she and I would be inside having a party skating. And it was just a small little circle that you went around, but it was still something to do, you know, something different, something fun. We weren't hurting anybody, hurting anything. We weren't in any danger. We were just skating around our basement. So 
so much fun. I remember one time my parents got a new refrigerator. We had to get a new refrigerator. The old one died and they bought a new refrigerator and it, of course it came in this huge box. Well, we played with that box like crazy. Oh my gosh. That was a fort. It was all kinds of stuff. And then um, one time my parents got a... It was when microwave ovens were first popular and they were pretty big and uh, like the size of them were large so my parents got a microwave oven and the box that it came in Judy and I took that box we made it into a dollhouse we took wrapping paper cut wrapping paper and put it in as wallpaper we made uh, curtains out of paper towel and that was a big dollhouse for us. Judy and I used to color rocks when we were little. We would pick up these pretty rocks around our house, sit out on our front porch with our big bucket of crayons and color rocks. We used to sell them for five cents or a quarter or something like that. I don't remember. And one of our parents' very dear friends, whenever he would come and visit, if he saw that we were selling our colored rocks, he would always buy two. One from Judy and one from me. He was the sweetest, sweetest guy. And of course we played hopscotch and all kinds of stuff on our on the street on our front off the front of our house in the uh, on the sidewalk hopscotch and skip rope and we'd ride our bikes up and down the street around the block we were only allowed around the block but that was a big enough area we didn't have to go any further Close to being done here, friends. This is taking longer than normal. Oh no. I'm gonna have to say goodbye, my friends. I just looked up and I saw that my battery is is uh, low. So give me one moment. I'm gonna change my battery. I'll be right back. Sorry friends, I had to change my battery. I have additional battery power now, so, and the ability to edit this together, so I'm able to change my battery and continue onward. Isn't that neat? And in that time, I had a chance to talk to my husband. So he had uh, texted me before, or actually called, and I texted him back real quick that I was filming. But in the time that I changed the battery in my camera, I had a chance to chat with him for a moment. So I apologize for that brief intermission, but here we are. And I forgot what we were talking about, so we'll just continue on talking about diamond painting. And let us see here. I know we were talking about when I was younger. I know we had a discussion about playing hopscotch and coloring rocks roller skating in our basement, but I forget what we were talking about when my battery was going down. So, like I said, we'll get back to diamond painting. And we are almost done with this particular color. There we go. That's what I love about being able to have more battery power now. Oh, drill overboard. I can go ahead and be able to continue taping and be able to just do a quick change of the battery. So 
so that's a plus. And I got this set from Amazon. It came with a set of three batteries and a, um, a three slot charger. So that's neat. And we are almost done with our downward arrows. Like I said, I know this is a longer video today, I'm sorry, but I just wanted to try to finish around her eyes and get her nose done because it's just, I just, I'm, I'm at the point now where I just can't wait to see this come together, like the eyes and stuff. She's just, she's coming to life and I really want to, you know, see what she looks like with her eyes all done and her nose all done in that area. And then we'll work on the roses and, you know, and all that. All that jazz. I just, I'm getting so excited because I'm seeing so much progress now and I just want to keep plugging forward. And if this video is too long, I do apologize. I, I, like I said, I do try to keep them about a half hour. Sometimes they go a little over, sometimes they're a little shorter. So I figured, you know, this one time, if you could indulge me, because I'm sure that, uh, I know there's some folks there that are really as excited as I am to see this little lady coming together and coming to life. So I just wanted to get this portion of her face done, complete, you know, complete her face so we can see this little angel. And let's see here. Because she's so stinking cute. There we go. It looks like we're done with our downward arrows. Quick scan. Yep. Thank you for your service. Downward arrows. Color number 3371. Much appreciated. There we go. All right. And then our next color will be the dot. And the dot is our favorite, 310, number five. So let's go ahead and I don't have very many left. These, these are all that's left of my 310. There wasn't very many 310 in this painting. Wasn't very much 310 at all. And friends, once I'm done with the 310 on this nose, this nose will be complete. My stars. She's coming together, friends. She's coming together. I just, I can't stop now. We have to complete her eyes today. We have to. Please hang in there with me. because we're just getting so close. I think after I'm done with the dots with our 310, then we'll work on our um, ABs that go in to the eye areas. And that's exciting. There we go. So I have some up in here. There we go. Hang on, friends. This is not behaving itself. There we go. Are you in there correctly? You are. There we go. Much better. Okay. And so continuing on. I think I need to refill my wax in my pen. I think, I think. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and refill the wax in our pen. 
Why not? Right? Take a little moment. Sometimes you just have to refill. And there we go. Continuing onward. Yikes. Yikes. Oh, these black drills are a little... My eyesight's not as good as it used to be, so trying to maneuver these black drills. There we go. There we are. We'll get there, I promise, friends. We're so close to finishing this little lady's eye area, and we finished her nose, so that's an accomplishment. Come on, straighten up and fly right. There we go. I do, even when I'm not filming, I do talk to my drills. Why are you not behaving? Is it because you're upside down? Yep, that's why. Not anymore. Got you back on track. Yep, I talk to my drills, talk to my paintings. Why not, all right? I'll look at a painting as it's progressing and say, oh, you're looking good. Almost there. When I retire a drill, thanks for your service. I know I'm silly. I'm crazy. So we have just a little bit more to go on the dots. And I see a couple up there. And I also see a downward arrow that I missed. And friends, trust me, I will get to that downward arrow right now as I see it. So the downward arrow... And we'll grab that real quick. I'm just going to put one in the lid of my... Uh, it just so happens there's one in the lid already. Okay. You want to go first? For sure. There we go. That's all done. And we'll continue on with our little dots, our little 310. There we go. Sorry that I keep moving this. I can't help it. I press very hard when I dye my paint. The bad habit of mine. I'm seeing here that some drills when I'm done and I retire that color, some some colors I have more of. Some colors I have very few left. One of the colors that I did, I think it was one of the colors that I did yesterday, I had, if I had 12 drills left, that was a lot. So I cut it close. Cut it close. There we go. Just check and see. Down here we have some of the dots. 310. 310 friends if you don't know is black oops there we go and let's put you right there we're almost done with the 310 kids with our little dots Here we go, last one. Last one. There we go. Pretty sure it's the last dot. Yep. Superb. Thank you for your service. We have quite a few of these left over. So that'll go into my dr my storage, drill storage for my squares. Now we're going to work on the number one, which happens to be a an AB. Oh, and I'm going to have quite a few of these left over. Neat. Look at that. I still have quite a few left over in the container, and I only need a few. But I have I poured that many, so I'm going to have quite a few of those left over. So if I have a different project, I'd like to bling up a little bit with some ABs of the square persuasion 
Friends, we are almost done. Thank you so much for staying, sticking it out with me today. I know it's been a long video, but I really see, I hope you can appreciate that this is coming together and I just, I couldn't stop midway through. I just needed to see her eyes come to, come to life, you know? And it's really coming along nicely. Let me go ahead right here, straighten that out. There we go. It's just coming along really nice. And like I said, I just couldn't stop part way through. I had to see this section to the end from the beginning. There we go. Right there. Oh my stars, she's coming along so nicely. These ABs are amazing. So full of sparkle. And you notice, I mean, when you put, when you're working with ABs, it just, it's that Aurora Borealis coating on them. And it's an iridescent coating that just, when you set this next to the plain beads, the plain drills, it, will bounce color off of those plain drills and just add sparkle, depth, just a, a whole new level of the drills all around it. The AB drills are amazing. They just add a touch of life to the surrounding drills and it really complements a picture there we go. And we'll put in the ABs on this area here. Like I said, I'm going to have quite a few of these ABs. 102. It's like a black AB, a black drill with that iridescent coating. Oh my goodness, so neat. Here we go. We're getting there, friends. I love it. I just get so charged at this point because you know certain certain points in the painting I just get really it revs me up it gives me the the um, inspiration to continue and move forward sometimes you know not with this picture because I've been revved up from the first bead that I placed but you know there's sometimes where I'll be working on a on a canvas and part way through I'll be like I don't have it in me anymore I'm just getting bored I don't know why I'm just not feeling it and either I might you know put it away or sometimes I'll I'll you know just continue to plug on through and then I get to a spot where I'm like wow this is really coming out I can see my efforts you know all my hard work on this picture is coming through now and I can really appreciate it and it gives me that little extra pep in my step to continue on and it makes all the difference in the world because then once I'm done with the painting I can look at it and say man I was you know I was getting bored I was not you know feeling it for a little while but just looking at my progress it really gave me that inspiration to continue and I'm glad that I did because now I have a finished product and it's beautiful and I get to enjoy it. So that's what's, you know, that's what I feel with this. Uh, not that I have any, not that I was getting bored or anything, but I, I'm getting to a point where I like with the eyes, I'm seeing the eyes come together. I'm seeing this whole facial area come together and it's almost done. I'm just going to put in 
the last number for her eyes, which is number 4141. And that's probably going to be, yep, it's a white, a white uh, AB drill with that Aurora Borealis iridescent sparkle color on it. And that, friends, I have two more. Oh, my stars. Look at this little lady. She is coming to life. Look at her. Oh my gosh, friends. I'm actually going to get a little emotional about this because look at her face. She is so stinking cute. I really am going to get a little emotional because it just, look at how pretty she is. I want to take you back. There you go. And move her back. Look at her. Oh my gosh. I'm going to try to turn her towards the light so you can see the, the, just the absolute sparkle in her eyes. That's what really charges me, that beautiful sparkle in her eyes. Let me go ahead and see if we can't, I don't know if you'll be able to see, maybe not. It's just sparkling so much. Look at her. Oh my gosh, friends. Look at that sparkle. And look at how beautifully she's coming along. I mean, you could just, I, you could just sit here. I could put her on my lap and pet her. Oh my gosh, look how lifelike she looks. So pretty, coming along really nice. Well, friends, I want to thank you. It's been a long video, and thank you so much if you were able to to hang in there throughout the whole video with me. I certainly do appreciate it. Uh, if you are a current subscriber, I certainly appreciate that as well. If you've not yet subscribed, please do consider doing so. Uh, you know, hit that like button because each like, each comment, each subscription, share the video, hit that bell notification. It all makes a difference here in YouTube land. I am a little crafty fish in a great big crafty pond, and I so appreciate your continued support. Please, friends, take care of yourselves. Watch out for your friends, your family, your neighbors. And please, my dear friends, be the voice for all of those animals as they don't have one. Until I see you again for another daily whip and chat of this young lady, our Yorkie and Roses. We'll start with the Roses the next time. God bless you, each and every one of you. Take care. Have a great day. Goodbye now.